Hey, Tree Guy Tyrell back with the interviews. Serie A has been dominated by Juventus and Napoli this season, but there's one team that's on fire and looking to make a run for one of the Champions League spot, and that's AC Milan. Gennaro Gattuso has turned things around. Milan are 11 games of beating in all competitions and looking to finish in the top four. Can they do it? Will they do it? Don't worry, here at the interviews, we've got you covered. So on this edition of the interviews, I'm gonna break down what Gattuso has brought to Milan. So AC Milan, obviously one of the hottest teams in Serie A to start 2018, unbeaten in 11 games in all competition. What's gone right for them? What has Gennaro Gattuso changed? Don't worry, we're going to briefly break it down here and throughout the rest of the season, we're going to follow them and analyze them and see where they go wrong or if they continue this form. When we look to the board, we got Milan in the red, obviously. And one of the big things that's really helped them since Gattuso's arrival has been their defensive shape. They're not conceding many chances and they're not conceding many goals. So that's very key and what's changed they've moved to more of a 4-5-1 without the ball obviously when you're 4-3-3 most of the time you do move into a 4-5-1 but they're organized they're disciplined they maintain their shape they're really tough to break down they get a bit narrow they keep the lines compact they don't really get shifted right from right to left and when they do they can't they keep their composure, they keep their shape. There are not too many teams in Syria that have the dynamism or pace to hit them on the counter attack or hit them in transition when they're out of position. So that's very key and they just really keep it all together and they're very hard to break in between and it does help that they have a combative midfield of players that work hard, disciplined, gritty, know their role and play it to a T. The one big issue with Milan is that sometimes they do press a bit too high and leave their defense exposed. And what I mean by that is sometimes when they look to close down, in these positions, they push a bit higher, but then they leave this space bare because the full backs and the center backs don't get up the pitch high enough to really compact that space and squeeze it. And that may not really harm them against most sides in Serie A, but against a team that they played this weekend in Roma, where Edin Dzeko likes to break into that space and drop off and get runners to play on behind him, or a team like Napoli, that, or even Juve, when you look at that, that could really be the difference maker there. And if they can really try and limit that and just get the players higher up the pitch, or if anything, bring the block down a bit, just to keep that space compact, it will really benefit them down the line when they face better teams that can harm them in those areas. But so far, so good. They drop into this 4-5-1. They haven't conceded many goals. They keep it sturdy at the back, and that's really pivotal because when you look at managers that come in, the first thing that they usually do is they look to improve the defensive aspect of the team, and I think Gattuso has done that to a T. Romagnoli and Bonucci have really settled the ship. They've had a lot of games together. They've developed a good partnership, and when they came Came in when Bonucci came in they played a three-man back line that didn't really work out for them and it looked like they were doing that to integrate him but he looks good in a four as we speak and it's really working and Milan have kind of just really picked things up because then they have those two there they have Lucas Bilia who has picked it up over the last few weeks and looks like if the World Cup were to start today Argentina would be in good hands with him starting at the base of the midfield he's done really well in that aspect playing sideways passes breaking up play and with him dropping a bit deeper it allows Ricardo Rodriguez to break forward it allows Davide Calabria to break forward and that's been pivotal specifically Calabria who has looked good on the defensive end but has also been a big big help going forward he's been a creator for Gio for Jack Bonaventura's two goals in the last few games and that's been very key they've developed a good partnership there and what happens is that the wingers also come in, so it allows Rodriguez to get forward, it allows Bonaventura to get forward, and they kind of source as their, they kind of act as a source of their creativity because Milan lack a true ball creating, ball creative player in their midfield. They don't have anyone that can control the tempo of the game from deep or really dictate the game as a number 10. So that's really key that they have the fullbacks that can offer that creativity and that supply. Then when you look at midfield, you have Frank Kezi who can do a great job. He's combative. He could break into challenges he could storm forward as well we saw Ricardo Montalivo play there recently and he did a good job playing a bit higher opposed to playing deeper so that's a great thing for Milan that they have some sort of depth in case a player gets hurt or suspended and um, when you look at Bonaventura he looks like the main beneficiary from Gattuso he scored five goals since 
uh, Gattuso has arrived and that's been very key and what he's doing is that he's getting the ball in between the lines he's turning forward and he's looking to play that killer pass and that's very key whether it be playing it wide to the winger or playing it wide to the fullback that helps and the other aspect is that he's breaking into the box late and that's how he scored his last two goals uh, via Calabria and that's one time where Calabria overlapped and got into that area pulled it back for him and he finished it and then you look at the game against Lazio where the deep cross Calabria was unclosed down and he nodded it past the keeper so that is what Bonaventura has been offering and if he can offer or provide more goals to his game that will be huge for his development and help Milan going forward and then you look up front you have Suso who cuts in from the right that inventive that inventive dribbling the ability to beat players to bring players to him and then playing open player that's very key Milan lacked that Syria a lot of teams lacked that a direct runner a direct dribbler and he's picked up his form playing on the right cutting into the left developed a good partnership with Calabria and that's been really beneficial and then you look at Kalhanlu he cuts in and he, although he hasn't scored many goals in the last few games he offers an impact he's influencing the game he's getting shots on goal he's forcing the keeper's hands he's really doing a job in that respect and he hasn't been bad from a defensive aspect he usually picks up the ball a bit deeper he still offers a threat on set pieces and he looks like he could get better and better as the weeks go on and then up front obviously we know Milan have spent money on Kalinic and they've spent money on Andre Silva but it's Cotrone the youth product who has really delivered he doesn't have an all-around game like Andre Silva and that's why it feels like maybe Andre Silva may come into the fold we actually don't know why he's not in the fold and we could probably figure that out over time but Catron for the limited amount of chances that are that Milan create or they have created in the past few weeks or since the start of the year he has made it his mission to finish them a penalty box predator with time to grow and develop his all-around game but that's what Milan need right now a poacher and he is really doing the job in that aspect doesn't get the amount of service that he needs Milan don't really control the game in that aspect where they create enough chances as they would like but he's done the job so far Milan look like they're back in the fold they are pressing well even when they get pressed they're being able to bypass the pressure they look confident on the ball they're working hard on both the offensive end and the defensive end and if they continue this who knows what the future unholds they could possibly finish in the Champions League spots or at the bare minimum like I said the Europa League spot but the real test starts this weekend Roma they travel to the Stadio Olimpico and we'll see what this Milan side's about and from there we'll really know if they have the the resolve and they have if they have the guts and the greediness to grind out results away from home against a top side in Syria and prove that they belong amongst the elite sides in the country but let me know what you guys think meet me in the comments below don't forget i upload videos every day and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and that was your daily dose of the interviews